Welcome to the Chemistry Cauldrons episode on gravimetric analysis and percentage composition. I've decided to combine these two concepts into the one episode because they are fundamentally linked. Gravimetric analysis is a technique to quantitatively determine the amount of substance within a mixture by measuring its mass. And by doing that, we can work out the percentage composition of um, a mixture. Think about nutritional-wise. You can see here a variety of nutritional labels from food that tell you the percentage of mass of certain nutrients within the food. Protein, carbohydrate, fat, salt, etc. We also work out the percentage composition of impurities um, in different things such as alloys, in steel, to work out whether or not that uh, we need to improve industrial processes to decrease impurities and therefore affect the structural integrity of the outcoming steel, for example. Historically, that was a very important point. The Titanic actually had steel um, made with too much impurities, therefore weakened the actual structural integrity and was one of the factors that ultimately resulted in its demise. So understanding percent impurity is very, very important. So gravimetric analysis, even today, is very important. It helps us work out the formulas for compounds. Not only today, but historically, it was used to weigh and determine the formula of many ionic and covalent substances. And in fact, we'll be doing a practical later on where we actually measure out the mass um, of magnesium oxide and show that it is a one-to-one -one relationship using gravimetric analysis. Just recently, however, we've been in the lab and we've been looking at trying to solve a crime based on gravimetric analysis and percentage composition. It was a crime where we had a um, pack of DVDs stolen from a car in Bondi and we had samples of sand from two suspects and the crime scene. So we had to try and match the samples from suspect 1, suspect 2 and the crime scene in terms of the percentage composition of silicon dioxide. So what percentage did we find that was in those? We also wanted to work out the percentage composition of sodium chloride. Salt, a common component of sand and also a characteristic of the type of beach that it's from. We also had a look at calcium chloride as well, so calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate also, we needed to work out the percentage composition. So who did the crime? That's what we had to analyse. And you did a series of steps, physical separation techniques and chemical, to try and determine the percentage composition and narrow down the suspects. Now, the first thing you needed to do was to separate the insoluble material from the soluble material. And let's have a look at how you did that. So when you got your samples, crime scene samples and suspect samples, you would have f found that it was a mixture of three components. It had silicon dioxide, it had calcium carbonate, and it also had sodium chloride. Now, in order to work out the percentage composition of those, we need, need to be able to mass them out. And so to mass them out, we need to separate them. And so you need to realise that silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate are both insoluble right, in water. whereas Sodium chloride, however, is soluble and therefore forms an aqueous solution. So the first step that you need to do is filtration. So after dissolving the sodium chloride and the other components in water, the resulting mixture get, then gets passed through a filtration setup and you put your filter paper in there into a filter funnel, obviously, you've got a beaker down here, you pour it normally in with a uh, glass stirring rod, so that means that none of the solution will accidentally drip down between the glass and the filter paper. Right, so you pour it in the middle, and when you do that, you should have your residue, which would be the silicon dioxide solid. You would then have the calcium carbonate solid. But the sodium chloride is actually soluble in water, so the solid sodium chloride will then pass through the filter paper, go through there, and the sodium chloride is actually collected in the filtrate. Okay, and then and then you have your residue containing 
the two insoluble substances. Of course, to that, you then have to do the next step for your filtrate is to evaporate it to dryness using an evaporating basin and then the last bit of evaporation you can do in an oven so you don't spurt the, uh, the, any salt there um, onto the bench. And then you mass it out and so when you mass it out you'll end up with a mass of sodium chloride in grams, right? That's grams there, not gas. Right, so maybe I should just move that out of the way. Okay, so that would be a certain amount in grams. Let's say 11.1 grams you would, might have. You then, of course, have to get rid, find a way to separate these two. And that's in the next step which we're going to look at, which is um, reacting it with hydrochloric acid. Okay, with the, with the hydrochloric acid, remember at the moment you've got your sodium chloride at 11.1 grams. So you've got the mass of that. You've got the original mass, of course, that you started with. Okay, let's say, just for argument's sake, it was um, 60 grams. Okay, now you've got to realise that you've got a residue left in your filter paper. And in the filter paper, you have your silicon dioxide and you have your calcium carbonate, whatever colour I used before. Okay, so you've got your calcium carbonate. You now have to separate those components and weigh each individually. So what you can do is you can scrape this off, put it into a beaker. Okay, once inside the beaker, there's our calcium carbonate, once inside the beaker, we're then going to react it with some acid, hydrochloric acid. So there is our mixture. To that, we added some HCl. The HCl reacts with the calcium carbonate. So you've got HCl plus calcium carbonate. That's going to form calcium chloride plus the uh, water, whoop, going out off there, plus carbon dioxide gas. Okay, and so if we balance that equation, we can see there's two chlorines, so we need a two there. We've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens. We've got three oxygens, two, three oxygens, one calcium, one calcium. So there, that's that equation balanced. So in doing that, we now have gone from an insoluble calcium carbonate to an aqueous salt there. The carbon dioxide gas gets driven off. Okay, right, so we've already got a mass of this that we know, okay, a dry mass. We react it, CO2 gets driven off, we're left with calcium chloride, we then filter that again, okay, once we filter that, we then um, have separated the calcium chloride from the silicon dioxide. So in our filtrate, we should have our calcium chloride. Okay. In the residue, we should have our silicon dioxide left. So therefore, the mass difference between our residue here and our mass initially should give us the mass of our calcium carbonate. Okay, so we've got the mass of our silicon dioxide, we've got the mass of our calcium carbonate and we've got our mass of our sodium chloride and we've got our initial mass. So using all of that we can calculate the percentage composition of each of those salts in the unknown. Let's have a look at it in the next section. Alright, you saw from the last step there that you filtered it, you then massed the, uh, the filtrate after evaporation to get the mass of the salt, you then reacted the residue with hydrochloric acid which got rid of the calcium carbonate, you filtered that off so that you could measure the mass difference between 
the two and work out the mass of calcium carbonate salt and then you're left with the mass of silicon dioxide. Let's say you've got these values here. You need to now calculate the percentage composition. This is what you did. The percentage composition of, let's say, sodium chloride is equal to the mass of sodium chloride divided by the initial sample mass times by 100. And so for our particular example, we used 11.1 .1, divided that by 60 times by 100. Okay, I'm going to give you a second to calculate that with your calculator. Okay, hopefully your calculator should have plugged out the number of 18.5%. So that's telling you that 18.5% of the mass of the sand contains sodium chloride. You do the same calculations for silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate and you'll end up with three values of a mass percent. Once you do that for the crime scene, suspect 1 and suspect 2, you should then be able to see that the suspect 2 had identical mass percentage values compared to the crime scene. So technically it placed him at the crime scene, didn't actually say that he did the crime, however it's one contributing factor that you could use in a court of law to say you were present at the crime scene. Okay, just a sort of a, a semi-fun way to work out percentage compositions before we get into the real heavy stuff. All right, so that's percentage composition and gravimetric analysis. Now in terms of um, the upcoming assessment task, you need to understand this basic concept. So I'm going to give you a few more questions on gravimetric analysis and percentage composition and we're going to work our way through them so you can really nail any calculations and conceptual challenge that you may have. Okay, here we are looking at a gravimetric analysis question. Let's go through it. It says, when a one gram sample of a copper sulfate pentahydrate compound was heated to remove all hydrated water, its anhydrous mass was 0 0.6390 grams. What is the experimental value of the percent water of hydration? So the first thing we do in chemistry is we like to do a, an equation. So we have copper sulfate, pentahydrate. Of course here we're just adding heat so we're decomposing, it's a decomposition reaction. Okay, that gives us a copper, whoops, copper sulfate. Okay, and then of course we have our five water molecules being released as a gas. Okay, so we've got that happening. Now we started off with one gram over here and we ended up with 0 0.6390 grams over there. So the mass difference between the two would be the mass of the water. So the mass of the water is equal to 1.000 take away 0 0.6390 that turns out to be 0 0.3610 grams okay so that's the mass of the water that was contained within our sample so to work out the percentage composition now of water it's equal to 0 0.3610 divided by the initial mass of the sample, in this case it was just 1, times 100. That turns out to be 36 point, sorry. Thirty-six point one zero percent Okay. Now why didn't I write just 36.1%? Well, we have to think of significant figures and to do that I'd recommend you go and watch the significant figures episode because it will be marked in the exam to have correct number of significant figures. Okay, here we have four significant figures there. 
We have four significant figures there, so our answer has to be in four significant figures. Okay, I hope that makes sense of what gravimetric analysis and percentage composition is all about. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Ask me.